than am I. There we go. Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship here at St. John's. Welcome to those who join us online as well for worship. We are so glad to have you here this morning. Please know that you are Christ's invited guest to join us at his table as we worship this morning and receive Holy Communion. Just a a brief note, uh, for those of you I haven't met yet, I'm Pastor Todd Nelson. I'm so grateful to be here and to celebrate with you. I want to say thank you to everyone who uh, welcomed me uh, this past uh, two weeks now, starting tomorrow will be two weeks. Uh, I'm grateful to be here and excited to share the ministry with you. One thing you need to know is uh, sometimes I don't know the ritual yet or the routine, so if I make you stand when you're supposed to be sitting, just say, hey, we sit. (laughs) And if I make you sit when we're supposed to be stand, say, hey, we stand, or just enjoy the fact that you can sit a little bit longer. So now, I want to invite you to please stand as we begin our worship with the order for confession and forgiveness. As God's people, we gather as we live in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. We keep a moment of silence for our own private prayers of confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering song this morning is Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
invite our Advent readers and candle lighters forward. Every year we light candles as we prepare for the coming of Christ. More and more candles, more and more light, as we watch and wait for Jesus, the light of the world. God of promise, come into our darkness. Renew our hope and praise in us, for you alone bring life out of death. Receive God's promise of joy from Psalm 28. Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard, me, heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart thrusts in him, and I am here. My heart leaps for joy, and I will give thanks. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. This holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
be with you. Together we pray the prayer of the day. When Israel had lost everything, you reminded them they still had one thing, your word. Help us to speak and listen for your word so that we might accomplish its purpose. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. 
Good morning. Uh, the scripture reading today is Isaiah 55, verses 1 through 13. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that you do not know, you shall run to you. Because of the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found, Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, and that he may have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my ways my thoughts that your thoughts for as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth making it bring forth and sprout giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater so shall my word be that goes from my mouth it shall not return to me empty but it shall accomplish that which i propose and succeed in the thing for which i sent it for you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, one day there was a, a little boy that wanted to meet God. And he knew it was going to be a long trip to go where God lived. So he, he packed his suitcase full of Twinkies and root beer, and he started his journey. And, and we, he got in about, about three blocks, I suppose. He met this elderly man, and this, the man was just... Well, he was sitting in the park by himself feeding the pigeons. The boy sat down next to him and opened up his suitcase. And he was about to take a, a drink from his root beer when, when he noticed that the man looked really hungry. And so he offered him a Twinkie. The man was grateful and gratefully accepted and smiled at the boy. And his smile was so pleasant that the boy wanted to see it again. So he offered him a root beer. Again, the man smiled and was delighted with the boy. Now they sat there all afternoon, smiling back and forth, but they actually never really said a word. Now as it started to grow dark, the boy realized that, that he tried, that he was tired, and then he, it was time to go home. He had to get up and leave, but... Before that, he got no more than a couple steps, he, he turned around and ran back to that man and, and gave him a big hug. The man gave him his biggest smile yet. When the boy finally got home and he opened the door to his house, a short time later, his mother was a little bit surprised by the look of, of joy on his face. So she asked him, well, what did you do today that made you so happy? He replied, I had lunch with God. But before his mother could respond, he added, you know what? God's got the most beautiful smile 
I've ever seen. Now, meanwhile, that elderly man, also radiant with joy, returned to his home. His, his own son was, in fact, stunned by the look on his face, and he asked, Dad, well, what did you do today that makes you so happy today? He replied, well, I had Twinkies at the park with God. And however, before his son could respond, he added, you know, he's, he's much younger than I thought. I'm getting some feedback. Are you guys getting feedback? You want to turn me down just a little bit? Well, too often we underestimate uh, the power of a touch, the power of a, a smile, a kind word, a, a listening ear, a small compliment. I mean, even, even the smallest acts bring about joy. And the other side of things, words, words can also be very powerful. How we use our words can kind of dictate the power that they will have. In our scripture reading for today, we read about Isaiah. And he has this task to try to kind of convince the Hebrews, the, the Israelites, to return from this place of captivity in Babylon to their home after many years. And so he had to use, of course, his words. And, and he, well, really he used his words, but he used the word of God. And what Isaiah did is he offered up some good news about God's love and God's forgiveness. But what he did and how he said it was important. How he represented God's word was very important. He could have used God's word as a weapon, almost to threaten the people, scaring them to believe and to follow him. Yet, well, I believe, and I hope you two do too, this is not how we are supposed to use God's word. It's not a weapon. It's, a, it's supposed to be a tool to proclaim God's love, God's mercy, and God's grace. Now, it's interesting that we, that we look at words sometimes as being simply just words. As if we some... Uh, how many of you, when you were a kid, heard sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me? <laughs> we all have heard that, right? Yep. I don't fully believe that. There's not, a, there's not much truth in that anymore, I don't think. Now, here are a few words uh, or sayings from people throughout history which shows that words have much more power than we give them credit for. I have a dream. Martin Luther King Jr. Four score and seven years ago, Abraham Lincoln. Be the change you want to see in the world. Gandhi. Some words have the ability, the power to transform for the better. And then there's, I believe today that my conduct is in accordance with the will of the Almighty Creator, Adolf Hitler. Some words have the power to transform the world for the very worst. Words can hurt, can't they? Words can really hurt. It can empower millions to stand and to fight for justice, and it can do the opposite as well. A theologian once said that God's words have the power to transform the world eternally. We are charged with a tremendous responsibility concerning God's words. We cannot use God's words or, or, or God's word to, to beat down people, to justify war, to prove a position, or to keep people in poverty. God's, God's words and, and God's word must be spoken with tenderness and love, with power and justice, with thought and meaning. We can use God's words to change the world for the better, for acceptance, for justice, for tolerance, for communicating, for peace, for the uplifting of humanity, for love. Now, if we look at our own lives a little bit, reflect a little bit on how, well, society, I guess you could say, lives, 
it seems that we're not. We really aren't much different than the Hebrews of that time, of our, our Hebrew ancestors. I mean, I don't know about you, but I think as a society, we're trying to constantly seek things that will satisfy us. But many times, we're coming up empty again and again. And we consume mass quantities of stuff, but it feels like we're never full. How many of you fill your lives with frantic schedules? You can nod your head. You've got a pretty busy schedule, right? We fill our lives with frantic schedules, running errands, chaperoning children, shopping, especially this time of year, the shopping, and all of the different entertainment options. I mean, we also live in this technology frenzied world, right? Television, internet, all of those things can mesmerize us, almost paralyze us to what we're watching. We go from one thing to the next, barely taking a breath, eating on the run, taking as much in as humanly possible, believing that because of those things, we're going to find happiness. But I don't know about you guys, but instead of finding happiness in all of those things, I know for me, I feel like I'm more anxious and frantically running around trying to just get it all in, head spinning, running in different directions, exhausted, and many find themselves depressed and lost because of these things. Yet, for the Hebrew people and, and for us, God's word changes everything. And we, we hear about a, a God today that, that welcomes everyone, all who thirst, all who hunger. We are to come to the waters, and if we don't have money, we'll come anyway. Come drink the milk and the wine and eat as if there is no price. We hear the word of God today, which which shows us the enormous amount of acceptance and love that God has. Now, during this time, the non-Jews really had no rights to God's favor. That was the belief. No claim on his gracious love. These Gentiles couldn't earn their way. It was, it was in many respects, the birthright of the Jews. So the Gentiles believed that forever they would stand on the outside looking in. But then we hear Isaiah that comes along and, and, and changes things a little bit. He reminds people that, that God is an all-loving, all-inclusive, welcoming God, coming to save all people. Even for the 21st century, it's a pretty radical thought, isn't it? Free. Nothing in this world is free. If something's free, there's always a catch, right? But yet, there's no catch. There's no strings attached. There's no exceptions to the rule. This gift is free. For thousands of years, we haven't found a, a loophole or, or fine print or these expectations that we need to live into that would limit God's grace or God's love or God's love for all people. All people. So we as a church and throughout society over time have kind of made up things that we can put forth these expectations that people have to try to live up to or live into. In reality, it's impossible. If you do just a little bit more, if you come to worship a little bit more, if you pray a little bit more, if you put a little more money in the offering plate, then, then you'll earn God's love. Or you have to learn the religious language or the ways of, of worshiping or, or the religious rituals and practices of a specific church before God's going to love you. And yet, Isaiah reminds us that all of those things, all of those things don't keep God's love from us. Nothing. Nothing can keep God's love from us. And I think when we as a church try to put forth those ways of doing things, those 
expectations, I think God is screaming out, what are you doing? What, what part of free don't you understand? But there are many in our world today that feel like those Gentiles, like they're on the outside looking in. So we have to ask ourselves the question, how are we using God's words, God's love, God's mercy, and God's grace? Many view the church in a negative way because of the way that, that God's word has been used for, for harm, for, for pain, for guilt, even war. It's why many have, over the years, turned kind of a deaf ear to the church, the church's words, because throughout history, the church does not always live into God's word in a way that, that shows that, that love that God freely gives to all people. So we have to remind ourselves, to challenge ourselves, to help others remember and know that God's, God's love is truly free. So may we remember these words. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. You who have no money, come and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. For God's grace and love is for all. Thanks be to God. Amen.
This morning, we add to our prayers uh, Elizabeth Olson, who has had a fall and has broken her hip, and we remember her as well. As well, we remember all the people affected by weather incidents that have occurred in the South over this past weekend. I invite you to please stand. We pray for the church, the world, and for all of those who are in need. Your ways and deeds are not our ways, dear Lord. And yet we so often prefer our own. Your epic vision of a radical deliverance from, uh, for all is sometimes more than we can comprehend and perhaps even more than we are willing to accept. Turn our hearts to you again and give us your own eyes to see the world in which you, to see the world which you have made benevolent God. Hear our prayer. As the rain and snow come down from heaven, so shall your word be unleashed throughout the earth to accomplish that which you envision. May we either avoid or stand in the way of your powerful purposes, but rather be your ag agents of change and mouthpieces of proclamation on behalf of the gospel. Benevolent God, hear our prayer. We await your coming, O Lord, not only in the season of Advent, but also your eventual return to restore creation to yourself. Inspire us to proclaim your promises to, uh, to all that need to hear them. Lord, we pray especially for people who are suffering because of tornadoes in the south. We pray for those who mourn the loss of life. We pray for those who are seeking refuge and relief. We pray for those who provide that. Lord, surround them with your constant care. Benevolent God, hear our prayer. The water that you give can quench every thirst for eternity. Give us this life-giving refreshment when we thirst for healing, wholeness, and restoration. Offer the cup of water to all who have particular needs those whom we name before you now, Glenn and Iona Rosenberg, Jenny Klein, Sally Mazingo, Burnett Hendrick, Maynard Nelson, Cecil Mazingo, Gary Geisinger, Jay Larson, Harlan Meyer, Marilyn Nelson, Sherilyn Peterson, Russ Olson, Laura Daughtry, Elizabeth Olson, and those we name in our silence before you, and those who have no one to pray for them. Benevolent God, hear our prayer. With your witness, David, and with all the saints who testified to your glory and who lived and died in you, we also add our voices, trusting that you will empower us as you did them. Benevolent God, hear our prayer. You are all powerful, yet you incline your ear to the smallest concerns. God of compassion, receive our prayers and bless our journey as we walk in your ways. Amen. Please be seated at this time. We receive our offering and we place the joyful jar out. And so we give God thanks for your generosity this morning.
Let us pray together. God of new life, you have given all that we need for this life. God, so much more. You have given our needs and that's us with them. May our gifts we offer here be a sign of the gratitude that overflows in us.
I invite you to please stand as you're able for the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you forever in God's good grace. Amen. Ah, there we go. Now we'll do it. I, Alex is sitting there. You can't see it, but he's shaking his head. What a Luddite pastor I'm working with. <laughs> I can't believe that. Anyways, we, uh, we apologize uh, for uh, failing to include in our prayers the family and friends of uh, Mary Broder. Pronounce, just pronounce it. Bronder. Bronder. So, uh, Mary Bronder, so uh, please accept our, our apologies for that. A couple of other announcements that we want to draw your attention to. First of all, you may have noticed when you came in this morning, there's this great big wall uh, of envelopes out by the office. That is a generosity wall. Uh, the goal is to pay off the mortgage and have a great big celebration uh, in February. And so, uh, you can pick a, an envelope off the wall, it'll be in an amount, and you can feel free to fill that envelope with that amount of money, or even if I, I dare you, I challenge you to go beyond and, and write in a little bit more. Uh, and that way we will pay off our mortgage in February, and that will be a great and glorious thing. Speaking of great and glorious things, Christmas is around the corner, and as a result, uh, we are having a parents' night out this Friday and gift wrapping. So if you have uh, some gifts that need to be wrapped, uh, come here to church on Friday. There's information about it in the bulletin. And have your gifts wrapped and you'll be ready to go for Christmas. If you're, a, if you're a person like me who doesn't wrap very well, this is an excellent opportunity to support our youth and also uh, to take care of that annoying gift wrapping that uh, we experience. Also, we are still looking for time and talent sheets to be turned in. Uh, please feel free to turn those in if for some reason you don't have
With arms open to all, together we live and share the love of Jesus. Go in peace, serve the Lord someplace else. Thanks be to God.